Hi guys, this is tape four, I think. Go. Anyway, um, Diane coming to you from Texas, and yes, it's after midnight, and yes, my sleeping schedule is like wonky. Um, throwing this together, have the, the crazy type lighting, very unbalanced, and this light over here is like hurting my eyes, but, um, I, there was something I wanted to jump on here and make a quick little video. So it's Diane in Texas, also known as Grandma Birdie. For that's a new one. Um, Surrey, if I'm dancing, um, and that is belly dancing or doing the hula, and or one of the cultural dances. I love to do the kaliji. Or Lucky Gardenia as far as my YouTube channel dashboard confessional and now that it's getting so dark so quickly um, I have ended up coming to you from my bedroom with every light on and yes it looks like I'm being held hostage and somebody please send money uh, anyway just joking around I just thought I, I would jump on here before it had been another month or so um, in between videos. There was, you know, I, I'm pretty much hunkered down here, um, just Lucy and I, and so we have a really exciting life, but I thought there were a couple of notable things that I'd like to share, and first off, let me... Just let the world know, if you don't watch my Facebook, that it is my daughter Jennifer, my youngest daughter. It is the beginning of her celebration of her, her wonderfulness and awesomeness. It's her birthday this month. So we start well in advance. She got a text from me saying, Happy Birthday Eve month. And yes, um, she deserves, both my daughters deserve more than a month to celebrate. So, um, not that she'll be out and about on the town, but you know, we can all celebrate in our own different ways. So, anyway, it, it's her special month, and she was born the day after Valentine's Day. So, she's, both my girls are my sweeties, and now I have a third with little Isabella. Um, the main thing I, I wanted to push through and do this video, even though I am not looking good, my hair needs to be cut, my bags under my eyes have bags, so, um, last week at the beginning of the week I didn't feel well, and this will, this is leading into a story, guys, so hang in there. Um, I don't know if I said Elvis is in the building, but he's around here somewhere. Um, so we're good to go. Anyway, there were a couple days last week that I really didn't eat much but um, some chicken broth and lots and lots of water. And, you know, that chicken broth never tasted better. I, you know, it was chicken noodle soup that I made at Bear Creek Mix, and they didn't have it at Walmart today. I was so upset. Um, but when I knew I was not feeling very good, I ended up, I whipped it up because I knew uh, my stomach was feeling queasy that I might not feel like making anything. So, got that together, put in the fridge, and in fact, I live off of chicken broth for a couple days, and I think the third day, I, I actually ate some of the noodles and added some veggies to it, so I knew I was on the mend, but um, this is the lead-up story. I have been dreading getting back on the scales, and I think y'all... If you've watched any of my videos, I mean, you can look at my 
very first one. I think it was 82 ago. Um, and I'm trying to think of when I started it. It was either, I think it was in two, summer of 2017. And I was much heftier then. And um, you can kind of see some weight loss happening. Anyone that looked at any numerous of my videos, they may not realize. Um, but I did lose quite a bit of weight, and 2017, 18, um, no, 18-19, I really got really down very low, and um, COVID solved all that. <laughs> I think people are having the same issue I did. Um, you know, I, I exercised every day. I was walking my little tushka off getting my steps in um but uh, you know everybody's life was turned upside down so and i think your body does have a set point that it will just boomerang right back and um anyway long story short i thought gee this might be the best time to just push forward and jump on that scales and I, I was thinking, I was trying to prep myself on the worst case scenario, and you guys, it, it was worse than, than expected. And what's even, um, what's more hard to bear is every time I got on the scales, um, of course I weigh with absolutely no clothes on, and no Diet Coke. You know, that's my go-to in the morning. Nothing to eat and drink. Um, but you know your scale's off when you can step on it and it says one weight. And then you can jump off and jump back on and, and it changes. And it goes up. And every time you go out, even if I didn't eat for an, for an hour, which I didn't, it still went up it's like you know if i'm going to deal with reality i need to know what the real number is so um due to the heightened concern about different strains of covid i didn't want to go out to walmart um to pick a new scale so amazon prime right there i did pay extra to have it like delivered between four and eight the, the next morning because um, I, I just needed to put this to rest and to know what I was dealing with how bad it was and I will say I am very grateful my weight by any means is not where it was when I first began my Weight Watchers journey years ago um, anyone that's gained weight from taking medication uh, for three years, putting on about two pounds a month um, on medication, you can't stop, and that's the worst way to gain weight because you're not having any enjoyment, um, no gooey desserts or luscious meals, um, but the weight's just packing on. So, um, so I am by no means unhappy with where I'm at. It's just not where I want to be. And although I was really thin the end of 2019 into probably through Mayish, um, COVID hit and, you know, being hunkered down, not getting out and about. And although I was walking every, every day, lots and lots of hours, it just, didn't keep it off so um, the scale came and it was a little bit higher than my wonky I think it's a Weight Watcher scale um, but it was consistent so there was a variance so I have my own way of working out what the weight is or what I'm gonna consider it is but I didn't toss the original one out and I, I have a second to bounce it off of um, 
needless to say, I wanted to address the issue. And I'd been seeing all these um, advertisements, you know, first the year, everyone setting their resolutions to lose weight, and all these um, commercials, ads for Noom. But I, my go to YouTube, I went, checked out the reviews and dietitians. Um, didn't have a whole lot of good things to say about it. And some of the users weren't happy with it. The one thing that did sound like it would be a good thing is the cognitive behavior, you know, addressing that. But really, when I thought about it, Weight Watchers was the same way. So, um, I'm going to lower this just a tad because uh, hopefully you can still see me. I'm here. Um, anyway, um, looking at my options, looked at some free apps on, um, there was one that came really close to Weight Watchers, but um, it was really hard to read. The app was so, the font was so small, and I'm looking at it on my phone. I've got to be able to read it, even with my readers on. Um, and it was just bare bones. And really what I wanted was to do, to approach this in a healthy way. And when I really thought about it, every time I've done Weight Watchers, I, I really end up eating more than when I'm not, when I'm trying to lose weight, where, which is pretty much just cutting out all food, you know, or a lot of it. So, um, knowing that's not the best route for myself, I came across, um, you know, I was trying to find out um, what the current price was. And I am a lifetime, I did achieve lifetime, and really I'm under my lifetime goal and I actually could pay for one month and then get it free and I may end up doing that but they had an offer that was um, I think only for a two-day offer it was great greatly reduced and you get a month free so um, that was a good way to start they also have not only um, in person, they call them workshops now, um, but you have to register to keep the, the numbers down, and those meeting rooms were never very big to begin with. Um, but along with that, they're also doing Zoom meetings, and I thought, that is awesome. You get the power of the group, you get the power of the, the I don't know what they're called, the leader, um, you know, they have weekly things that they're focusing on, kind of like the cognitive behavior. So I thought, okay, let's give it a go. Free's good. Free was good. Um, so I had to reacquaint myself with the app, and they've really improved it. I, I am very happy. I think I'm on a different plan than what I was. I think I was on a blue plan. There's a purple, blue, and green. And I'm on green this time. And so far, so good. Um, anyway, I thought, you know, I need to shake up the movement part of all this. And a friend of mine on Facebook, Miss Natalie out there, I don't think she watches my vlog, but um, shout out to Natalie. She was brave enough to um, post a video of her, she's losing weight, looking great, um, doing hula hoop. And it appeared to be a weighted hula hoop. And, you know, I'm trying not to spend money, trying to cut back where I can. And I thought, gee. Back when I went to Curves, way back when, back probably in 2005, they had weighted hula hoops that you could use. And I thought, back then, I thought, gee, I really like that. So I ended up, I bought one. I had it in, I won't tell you what I had to dig through to go find that sucker. But 
and I don't know how much it it weighs, but it I think different from Natalie's, it does have like internal like ridges, and you can bruise your hips from doing this starting off. But um, I'm hoping, even though I've got tip and rib scenario going on with my ribs and my hip bone, um, maybe I can find my waist again. Anyway, um, got it out. I think I did 15 minutes yesterday, and I could actually walk and move today, so that's a good sign. Um, so that's big news. Weight Watchers again. Yep. Um, they've got some really interesting new recipes. There was one for making pizza crust out of self-rising flour, I think a half a cup, and then half a cup of Greek yogurt. And you have to kind of, you know, mix it up and knead it. Um, but comes out, you, know, you can make it thick or thin, I would do thin. But, you know, turkey, pepperoni, not much cheese, put a little pizza sauce or just marinara. Um, that sounded really tasty, so I, I did get the makings for that. I bought some turkey pepperoni today and um, Greek yogurt and self-rising flour, so I think I'm good to go. So I'll, I'll have to get back to you on how how that turned out. Um, but I'm actually kind of excited and um, maybe it gives me something new to focus on, but I'm um, trying to do it in a healthy way. and. You know, I think what I've talked about is, you know, when you're my age, I'm going to be 62 in April, that, you know, your skin just doesn't bounce back like it did when you were a youngster. And, you know, your wrinkles start to show. Voila! Yep, that's what's going on. Um, so if I just plump myself up, I'd probably look a whole lot younger. Um, but that's what I'm endeavoring, endeavoring to do, if I can get that out, and no, I've not been drinking. Um, anyway, just wanted to touch on a couple things, and, um, you know, people that I know, a, a close friend of mine, I know she's got COVID, you know, um, all the markers are there, um, I'm just hoping it's not one of the worst strains. You know, I'm not old enough to get the vaccine. Uh, my sister teaches Zumba up in Oklahoma at a gym that's owned by a um, hospital. So she was eligible to get it. She's gotten it, and my brother-in-law has had some surgery, and he's eligible to get it. And I pulled it up, and I'm not at that Stage. I'm not, don't have a condition that's bad enough that would warrant it, or I'm not 65. And I'm not in a nursing home. I guess those are good things, but, um, so I'm waiting, you know, for my yeah. turn, but I definitely will be getting it, even if it is the Johnson & Johnson, which I think may be the best one yet. Um, because it really, although the effectiveness of keeping you from getting COVID is, not as high of a threshold, but there aren't people that are being hospitalized with it and they're not dying, at least with the current strains and probably more testing needs to happen. So I jump in line for that Johnson & Johnson, I do believe, if I had a choice. But yeah, watching the news, um, reading smart news about all these strains and how much, how, you know, what was really, I'm going to use the word daunting again, but to think that it's more virulent, it, it spreads quicker because it, it's, it can attach and, and multiply much, much easier than the original um, variant that we had, the virus, and, you know, all the experts sell the doctors on the news now, you know, it says your mask, if there's a crack in it, you know, lifting it down or up could 
be the difference of you getting one of these new strains that is really, really terrible. So, um, not that I've been socializing, but it really makes you second guess every time you leave out the door. And, um, I even found myself wearing the mask in my car. So, um, anyway, a couple of days I was really, really freaked out. It was like overwhelming. Um, but you know, whatever's going to be, it's going to happen. So, um, praying a lot, doing the best I can to, um, keep myself from being exposed to it and praying, you know, it's gone through my family. Um, but Lord knows with these new variances, people could start to get those again. So, um, I think it Let's just keep everybody in our prayers, and that would be a great thing. Um, oh, the the one thing why I really jumped on here to do this, I was grocery shopping, and yes, I, I get up late, I go to bed in the morning, and you know, sleep, and then you know, just wake up when I, because I don't have to be anywhere for the most part. Um, I went to the grocery store. And had some things I needed to buy for Weight Watchers. And anyway, I'm zooming around there. I'm having to use the app because you can look at the barcode. And it's really great. It tells you how many points it is. Um, anyway, not many people were in the grocery store, which was a good thing. But I looked down and... You know, something was on the ground, and it's like, what is that? And it was a $20 bill. Nobody around that it could have been theirs. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, you know, I'm cutting back, um, you know, at the grocery store or all kinds of places, but um, in every way I can. And there's, I know, people out there with a lot worse situations than what I'm in. And I'm like, oh my God, whose was this? You know, what are you going to go up to someone and say, did you lose some money? And most people would be tempted to say yes. And it's like, I'm looking to see if there's anyone, you know, like walking around looking on the ground. Um, there wasn't, I, you know, I just kind of kept myself aware of what was going on around me, hoping that there'd be some type of indicator. Because everyone loves to find money. I'm not saying... I'm not thrilled when I find a, a bill on the ground or in a pocket of jeans or something I've forgotten, but um, I really felt that I needed to find these people that this might be their only money for food. And, you know, I, I didn't want to keep it and feel guilty and, um, you know, but I knew it was limited what I could do. So what is your go-to or my go-to thing is you start praying to God. Um, I was like, God, please help me know who this $20 bill belongs to. Um, at the register, please let me know. I'm going to be looking to see if anybody's in distress because they don't have their money. Um, you know, but they have this whole new area where everyone has to self-check. There is nobody else checking out your stuff. And, and they're all spread apart, right? Because... We're trying to stay away from each other. Anyway, I, you know, I'm busy going through my stuff, and I will um, brag on myself. There were many items I decided not to buy. I ended up giving the poor lady that was working there, you know, I'm not going to get this, trying to keep the, the bill lower, um, very aware of trying to reduce spending. And there was a lady and a baby at a, the register right in front of me you know you're kind of side by side but it was the way I, I faced her when I was bagging the stuff you could see the other register and I thought oh someone forgot you know a jar of pasta sauce or a loaf of bread and they ran um, so I thought you know I'm just gonna keep an eye on the situation and lo and behold her husband comes up and I, I can see they're in distress and, um, I just knew, you know, um, th th this was, 
the couple that lost the money. And what are the odds that we're going to be at the register at the same time that I'm going to be right adjacent to them where I can see what's going on? Now, I did ask God to help me with this and prayed and prayed. And um, when I heard them being distressed, and, and they weren't talking loud, they weren't crying or anything, it, but I just, I was Badinsky, and I just said, did y'all lose something? And they looked at me, and they're like, yeah, I want said, was it money? And they're like, yes. And I'm like, was it $20? They said, yes. And um, I pulled it out of my purse, and I'm like, here, I've been looking for y'all. <laughs> and um, the husband had on a cross. He was a Christian. And... You know, it wasn't a wrapper type of cross. It was, I think, two nails, like being, you know, nailed to the cross. And I just said, this is definitely a God wink. And it just made me thrilled to be able to get that money back to the, the people who, whose it was. And feel good that it that really was theirs. And I was talking to a friend, and I was just recalling what had happened and how awesome in these scary times and I'm a worry ward I, you know I take anxiety medicine um, some days more than, a, than others um, but to say a prayer to God to help you find the people who lost this money in these trying times I'm going to cry but have them answer your prayer anyway sorry I'm just a cry baby but it's like validation that God is listening and I know not everyone's a Christian and they believe in different higher powers but I'm a Christian and it just I mean, it seems so little, but it is such a validation to me. Anyway, got the money to the people and they were just um, on their way out. They were like, thank you, thank you. And I'm like, thank you, God. Anyway, if anyone, my mask is going to run. Um, So don't doubt that God or your guardian angel or however it gets up to God that he's not listening. Anyway, I didn't mean to cry. But I mean, how quickly of a validation of answering prayer. Anyway. I pray for everyone that they're well and their families are well. And hopefully I'm going to be able to, I haven't seen my grandbaby not quite two months. Um, but I think COVID's made its way through everybody. And, you know, I've got Christmas presents for Isabella and she's growing up. And, she is doing so well for being a baby that was so underweight. Um, so much so that they were really monitoring it. For her, to, she's just thriving. And when I talk to Robin, I, I really love it. She's been calling me when she's on her way driving places. Either to go pick up um, Isabella from her dad's house or driving wherever. And it just reminds me of when my mom and I used to do that. I, I That was my go-to thing. I'd jump in the car and I'd be calling mom. And we had the best conversations and we just laughed so much. And just to be in that contact with Robin and to, to hear about what's going on. And um, 
you know, Jennifer's work in a really high pressure, very important job and works till 10 at night and has so much going on. And she's not a phone, she's not really a texter or a phone talker. So, but it's really special that Robin's been calling me and I'm able to keep up with this, what's going on with Isabella. And, um, <laughs> the other, I think it was just like a night or so ago. I could hear this rattling, this chinging, and I'm like, is that Isabella? And she's like, yeah, she's in her bouncy seat or whatever. And she was hitting one of the, the things that make noise. I'm like, oh, that is just so awesome. And, you know, she's going to be bilingual and um, tried to learn birdie and Spanish. And, of course, my brain doesn't remember that. I think I'm going to be little bird. Um but she's just a delight and I think maybe I already shared that I had ordered a rainbow ornament um, from Etsy and it just was more awesome than what I even thought and it's a rainbow and it's kind of like a handmade yarns kind of macrame rainbow with it's just hard to, I need to post a picture of it. Um, but showed it to Robin through um, text. I sent her a picture and she liked it. She hadn't found one. And I think I've already talked about it, but um, I think I was a rainbow baby. Robin was a rainbow baby for the most part. And Isabella is a rainbow baby. And I never heard of this term before. And it's a baby that's born after the moms and the dad have experienced a miscarriage. And it's rainbow baby because it's your ray of hope. Um, your answer to prayer. So um, I had Robin pick out the colors that she wanted and it came in today. So I'm so excited. I'm hoping that this weekend I get to go over there and spend time with them and um, take this special Christmas present that I have for Isabella that Robin still doesn't know what in the heck it is. So I, I'm really excited about that. Um, so there's some things to look forward to. Um, you know, I'm just a walking over here. Let me think of the Johnny Cash song. Just a walk. No, that's Patsy Cline. I'm just a walking. After midnight, looking for you. Um, no, I can't sing. Never have. Um, but maybe I need to learn how to play that on the ukulele. And um, trying to get out of my frozen funk of just being overwhelmed by everything. Um, and being more productive around my apartment. Getting things weeded through and thrown out. And... Um, had some really good usable space. I would love to have uh, kind of like an artist studio and like a little workout area where I do my little hula hooping, my little belly dancing and hula and yoga and all those things. All the good things. Anyway, um, what are y'all up to? What are y'all spending your time with? What are your New Year's resolutions? I'd love to know. Um, I'm still watching YouTube channels. I am watching, um, re-watching Outlander. And on Netflix, they just added the fourth season. And, you know, I think I maybe watched into some of the second season. So I've got a lot to catch up on. And... The fifth season's available pretty cheaply on um, Prime Video. So, and I think they're going to do a sixth season. And Lord have mercy, those books, the first one is like 900 pages. So there's a lot of material there to have lots of seasons. Anyway, they're so well done. Now I will say, if you're triggered by certain... Um, Violence or language or uh, crimes against women. Um, 
there's not a whole lot of that, but there is some. Um, if you're triggered by that, that, that would be something you would want to consider before watching. And definitely, it's not a, a show for children. Very adult um, content. My public announcement. Warning announcement. PSA or whatever it is. Um, anyway, I think that was everything I was going to talk about. Um, but most importantly, God's listening. At least he was listening to me in the grocery store at Walmart of all places. Anyway, love you guys. Thank you for whoever watches my videos. I've seen, um, you know, it's not like I have the most exciting content and definitely have not been doing much stitching, but I don't know. I, I, I love learning about people's lives all over the world and different ages and hopefully maybe somebody enjoys this I don't know hopefully but you know I'm gonna keep doing them because it's a record of my life and you know the way things are with our health crises who knows this you know I'm not gonna be morbid or anything but this could be my last video so um, I sure wish I had videos of my parents or my grandparents. So, at least there's that for somebody years from now, a little time capsule of my life. And, you know, I've done 80 something of these. Lord have mercy. Anyway, Happy New Year. Happy February. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy birthday to my daughter. And I think that's it. Oh, you know, I always think of something else. Um, I was talking to my sister in Oklahoma, and I always ask, what's for dinner? Because I'm usually talking to them when they're about to eat dinner. Um, and they had cooked something in their air fryer. And I had an air fryer, and, I, you know, I used it once, one real thrilled, gave it to Robin. Robin, I think, sold it on um, some neighborhood app and she said the other day man I wish I kept that air fryer and I'm like thinking gee I wish I kept that air fryer anyway that was one of the things that Tracy and Jay just love it and um, I saw a recipe on Weight Watchers for eggplant parmesan um, done in an air fryer and I thought gee I might need to get that so I found one had it in my basket and as I was buying groceries, I, I started thinking, is this really the right time to be buying that air fryer? And I thought, probably not. And probably if I was going to secondhand stores, I'd probably find one. But um, my um, yeah, I did have second thoughts, and I took it back, and I got home, and I thought, man, I wish I had that air fryer. But, um, do y'all have one? Do y'all use one? Anyway, um, I bought an eggplant for the first time ever, guys. I don't think I've ever cooked an eggplant. So, I uh, also bought some chicken, because you, you can do chicken parmesan and do it in a locale way. So, I will be doing that and just use my little convection oven for now, unless... Some air fryer just falls out of the sky at a good price. But, um, anyway, send in hugs from Texas to wherever you are, whatever time zone you're in, whether you're in the U.S. or around the world. Um, oh, I almost failed to say, being kind is really not the good answer. So keep that in mind. Everyone's nerves are frayed people's lights are turned upside down be kind um be there check on your friends and family to make sure they're okay especially if they live alone um life can turn around in a dime on a dime anyway love you guys uh, peace out